happy Sunday. Happy Resurrection Day. Um, so I thought I would come on and do my part uh, in the resurrection process. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is for those of you who may feel slightly disconnected or disembodied, uh, where you kind of just go on through the motions and you don't necessarily feel like you're getting the fullness of life, like you're existing, right? Um, the way I want to express that in, in our talk today <clears throat> is through talking about masculine and feminine energy. I have several trainings that I've done on masculine and feminine energy and my personal journey in even recognizing that I was operating in more of my masculine energy and how it was um, causing me to feel rigid and disconnected as I introduced to you guys before. The, the time that I probably really noticed it was after my divorce or during my separation and divorce time. And if you've been on with me before, then you'll hear this short briefing again, but I think it's important for those who are coming on who may find themselves in similar situations or um, just a way to relate. So I was married for 14 years. I've been divorced now for over three. And so there were many, many things that I learned through the process of being married and uh, my time of separation and just, you know, continuing to grow and evolve. I am far from new as it relates to the journey of personal growth and self-development. Um, I can remember even in high school, the types of books that I enjoy reading. I'm an avid reader, so I love to read. But, you know, as I began to, you know, really get to a space of self-reflection, I remember that I liked reading books about self-improvement and all of those things. So the journey in itself is not new to me, but the season that I'm in over these last maybe three years uh, has really taken a deeper dive into you know, self-reflection, self-awareness. And, you know, I realized that everything that I was doing felt, there, there felt like resistance. Even if it was working, it just felt hard. And, you know, I really felt disconnected when I tapped into my own inner self and, you know, just started recognizing more about how I was feeling, not how I was performing or, how well things were going, but how I was feeling. It became, you know, really important to me. And I realized that I've been operating in my masculine energy quite a bit. Now, for us as women, naturally, you know, we, we have feminine uh, qualities and traits. Uh, as humans, we're all born with both, both male and female energy. But for a woman, I find my personal experience and those who I've worked with or who have worked with me in the work that I'm doing, actually, um, I had a phone call, I just kind of dropped my thought just for a moment. But uh, the work that I'm doing, we I find that that masculine energy, when it's the first energy we see um, or that's existing for us as women, it doesn't really allow us to be truly connected to, to life and what we're doing. And so I thought that I would come on today and talk about it from an entrepreneurial perspective. Now, if you aren't an entrepreneur, maybe you're in corporate America, um, stay at home mom, this will still resonate for you as well. I um, one of the things that I realized about where our culture is and what our culture really heavily supports is the hustle hard, go hard. Um, it was pretty much a movement for quite some time and I was very much a part of the movement, okay? So I operated more in my masculine energy for quite some time. So to start, masculine energy is more of a do energy. It's like a penetrating type of energy and feminine energy is more about receiving. And I lost or my femininity had been compromised 
because I've been in relationships where I didn't feel safe. So I felt like I had to do. Um, and oftentimes that is one aspect that causes us as women to go into, you know, this hustle hard mode. I'm going to get it done. Uh, we almost feel like if it isn't hard, it, you know, it ain't for us. And although our culture was like really heavily, still are in some sectors, um, I don't see it as much because it's simply not my being at this time. And so I'm not attracted to it. I'm not attracting it. Even the things that I um, watch or, or listen to, it's so amazing how we shift from the inside, how things externally that we see are, are changed as well. So our perspective and everything changes. <clears throat> but just as much as there is a side where there is the hustle culture, there is also another side that has risen up. And that side is more on spirituality and, you know, being aligned and in flow and all of the things. And I believe that both of those aspects are needed in our life. And so for me, I am at my most comfortable when 80% <clears throat> of my energy is reflecting my femininity or my feminine energy and 20% masculine. So you do need the masculine, right? Because there are things that we have to do in life, even parenting or, uh, you know, things that running errands, different things of that nature. They're just simply things that we have to do in our lives, but our being the way that we're doing it really impacts how we are enjoying life or, or are able to enjoy life from a full circle perspective. Now, stay with me for just a moment. So one of the things that I noticed was <clears throat> it felt like I had like this wall up um, and I, I did have a, a wall up, but I mean, I could actually feel it once I started paying attention to my body and how it's actually feeling. There was like this stiffness internally that was transpiring for me and whenever there is this feeling, there's like this disconnect. You're not really connected to what's transpiring in life. You're doing, you're going through the, mo the emotions, you're existing, but you're not really feeling it and, and embracing it. And I realized that, you know, because I was operating so much in my masculine energy, go hard, get it done, all of those things, I wasn't taking time to actually feel and really be connected to life. And so I thought I would come on and, and share this perspective from two ways. Because for as much as there is the hustle culture, again, there is the spiritual um, entrepreneurs or the heart space entrepreneurs. And it's so easy to fall on either side and not have like this healthy balance that's needed. This is why I titled this particular training, The Starving Artist and The Booked and Busy Boss Babe. Because both of those are energies that you know, that particular archetype is operating their business and more than likely their life is reflecting, you know, the same. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to give some differences so that you can be aware of, you know, how that may look if, if you're an entrepreneur and, you know, let me know if you identify with it. So, when we think about the starving artists, we think about, I always think about Picasso and things like that, although they were wealthy, okay, so they weren't starving artists, but I think about painters. But most of the time when we, the work that we do in the world is our art. Would you guys agree? Put me in the comments if you agree that what you do in the world is your art. You know, now some people may not have moved to that space or of feeling that way about the business that they're doing or what they're doing in the world, because sometimes is just trying to get cash, right? But for the most part, you know, regardless of what it is that you do as a realtor or a doctor or a nurse or a hairstylist, a salon, what you do is, is an art. And so I wanted to use the starving artist as one of the examples and just kind of share the mindset, the heart space of the starving artist who's in business and why this is probably transpiring for them. Remember, keep in mind that I shared that, you know, masculine, you know, the differences in masculine and feminine energy. If you're on with me, say hello in the comments. Let me know who's on, who I'm connecting with. Do me a favor if you find value and you think someone else would find value in this um, conversation that we're having. 
tag them or share the video out. Um, I'll do a quick introduction at this point for those of you who are joining who just popped in. I'm Tanya Wilson. I am a master life and business coach and I help women get their whole life. Um, I focus on abundance mindset, personal growth and business building, which trickles down into areas of mindset, inner work, healing, um, you know, growing profitable businesses, all the things. And so um, that's what I do. And I'm so grateful. And when I was in the shower earlier, you know, I just I closed my eyes and I was just embracing the the water and I found myself in a space of gratitude like God I'm just so grateful just for the water right and that's something that actually happens when you begin tapping into your feminine energy in a healthy way you find gratitude in some of the most seemingly mundane things um, you, your your pleasure senses are heightened in in a way that um, I don't know, it's just been really beautiful for me. So I, I found a space of gratitude uh, when I was in the shower just for the water, right? And I was telling God just how thankful I was at this season in my life that I get to come and share and talk about this type of work that allows women to to heal and, you know, to to do some introspection and really live a rich, full, embodied life, not just, you know, a life where they're just existing so I'm grateful for this opportunity and for those of you who have um, embraced the work that I'm doing in this season and in the past I'm so grateful for you as well and just know that I'm always um, on a journey to continue growing so that I can come and share it with you and hope that you find um, a sense of awareness and and um, and growth in the process too. Okay, so the starving artist and the book and busy boss babe as it relates to masculine and feminine energy. So the starving artist believes that um, the struggling starv starving artist believes that struggling simply makes them better. Now I hear it all the time. It may not be those complete words, but you know, oftentimes it'll be, you know, I embrace the struggle. And I do believe that we should recognize the struggle, embrace the struggle for what it is, embrace the process for what it is. But the starving artist believes that the struggling makes them better. And there are simply other ways to become better, right? As opposed to having to experience it the hardest way. But oftentimes this is the mindset of the struggling artist. Um, let me just pull my book closer to me because I need some readers anyway. How many of y'all doing the reader thing? So, um, as far as the reader glasses, I haven't had any prescriptions or anything, but there are times where I need the readers. So, the struggling artist, um, number one, refuses to get help. They refuse to take classes. We're, we're talking about entrepreneurial standpoints, right? right now so the struggling artist just feels the struggle is just this is just gonna make me better it's kind of the thing that they've told their so they refuse to take a class they refuse to learn about finances it's just I don't know it's this thing on the inside is uh, an inherent belief that they have that the struggle makes them better and I just want to embrace a space of sharing that we don't have to do the struggle life, right? We, we don't have to do the struggle life, but this is what the starving artist believes. The starving artist also believes, um, I don't need training because I'm brilliant. Now, this is such a, a tricky space because there are so many gifted and talented people who um, never get to the Picasso level because they are already gifted with something and talented with something and they, believe that it doesn't need to be cultivated. They believe that they don't need training or help. And oftentimes this may come from the people that are in their circle who recognize their gifts, who are constantly sharing with them that they are, you know, brilliant, but then they're still the starving artists, right? So it's, it's a disconnect somewhere in there. Um, the starving artist believes, uh, one, I was talking about how people are always telling them that they're amazing. So 
what normally happens, this is what happens with the starving, starving artist. They will give away their value, their gifts, and their worth. And oftentimes, the payment is simply affirmation. So when they're lowballing or, you know, just giving their stuff away for free, no strategy about it or, or anything, they're... It's normally because somebody is telling them that they're brilliant and they're doing it in exchange for the affirmation, but they're still the struggling artist. These are some um, distinct things about this particular archetype, this particular type of entrepreneur. And it's often found in uh, the entrepreneurial space where it's a heart, heartpreneur or a purpose-driven preneur, someone who deals with um, spirituality or um, inner work or things similar to what I do is so easy to fall into that starving artist trap and you know just somewhere you know you just kind of end up giving all your stuff away this is the starving artist right um, they're, they're living for the verbal affirmation uh, they toddle between a day job and their business idea now it's, it's really easy right because I agree that depending on the space that you're in, your job can fund your business. But most of the time, the starving artist is still thinking that if they just keep doing it how they're doing it, they'll be discovered. And so their focus is not where it needs to be as it relates to their business. So they're all the way in an unhealthy feminine energy. This is the comparison that I'm trying to uh display for you all hopefully is is registering so the starving artist is oftentimes in an unhealthy space of feminine energy so they have no masculine going on they just you know living in their craft and free flowing and you know just randomly doing things all the things right because that masculine is the doing the masculine would be the systems the masculine would be um, a container that can hold the big dream as it relates to whatever that income goal is or, or things of that nature. But the starving artist is just kind of doing their art. They're so far in their feminine energy that they don't have the healthy balance that's needed. Now, And we're talking about business here because you know you are your business. And oftentimes this is a space that even health coaches and things of that nature may find themselves in. There may be a guilt because they're helping people, you know, maybe because it's not about business. You know, they're not helping people with a business necessarily. They may be helping them with their health or um, mindset or inner work. It's, it's often becomes a starving artist. They just kind of giving things um away so they have limiting beliefs about charging for their value this i see this a lot of times with um ministers who are doing things that they're not at the church pastoring they they write a book or um they have a special thing that they do i'm not talking about like prophesying or things like that i don't believe there should be like a charge for those things but uh ministerial gifts you know oftentimes they have other gifts and talents and they there's this thing that they don't feel that they're worthy of of charging for those things the starving artists they believe they don't need a process they could just because they're in this free flow state right it's just way too far in the feminine energy to build a profitable business. Now, for those of you who are in corporate America or in your everyday life, you may see this same behavior where eventually what happens is the starving artist gets really, really exhausted from the whole process. They begin resenting people, but really they didn't have the masculine containers that were needed to bring in the income. It's no pay button, or if they have a pay button, it's difficult to get the money to them. It's, there's no real process or firm masculine container that can hold whatever it is they desire so this may be uh, the case uh, slightly where you have this big goal um financial goal for your business but you don't have a container you don't have a, a product or um you don't have anything that could hold that amount of revenue and if you are not offering premium services and you have smaller um, amounts that you're charging for your services, you don't have the systems in place that could bring that much in. So the masculine part of it is normally missing for the starving artist. So I shared that for 
me in my personal space and most of the clients that I work with, there's a comfort zone where they're, you know, the goal is to get to like that 80-20 space where 80% of you is operating in your feminine side. And then you have that strong masculine 20%, that container for the things that you need to do. But the way the world has been dictating things to us, you know, the hustle, the hustle hard, chase the bag, no sleep, all of that stuff. I mean, there's something I feel even when I'm saying it that feels hard and heavy because I remember, right? Um, but the world has taught us to do that. And for us as women, when we are operating in that space, we're normally not at our best because there has to be some resistance and like these, um, this armor and all of these things up that don't allow us to receive. So this is often the space that the booked and busy boss babe operates in. She operates mostly in her masculine, if not all in, in masculine energy. So here's some beliefs and some things that are transpiring for the booked and busy boss babe. She believes if it isn't busy, if she's not busy, things will fail. So she has this inherent belief that if she stops for a moment or if she isn't super busy, if she isn't running from one job to the next, from one place to the next, if people aren't always calling her, if she isn't always doing any things, if she isn't always volunteering, if she isn't on every committee, she feels that things will fall apart if she's not busy. So a lot of what's going on with the uh, booked and busy boss babe is she's often in her head space and not her heart space. So when we are healthily aligned or align in a healthy way with our feminine energy, we're able to tap into our heart space and it helps us to really build businesses that are fulfilling and live lives that are fulfilling. There's this different, deeper connection to um, the cycles of life and the experience of life when we've tapped into a healthy space of our feminine energy. So the booked and busy boss babe, she'll work 12 to 15 hours, always working, she, home she working off she working in the car she works. she's always working and in her mind this is the only way that she can get things done she thinks that her business increases her social her busyness not her business but her busyness increases her social value she believes that her busyness increases her social value so prior to me coaching and consulting full time i owned a brick and mortar service based business and my the demographic or the women that I serve were very ambitious women, highly driven, ambitious women. I attract them. I still, at my core, am ambitious. I've just learned how to operate in my feminine in a way where that ambition doesn't feel hard and it's just completely different things flow. Um, I'm in a receiving space, so I give and it's, I receive and I understand the receiving and the boss babe, the book and busy boss babe, often doesn't know how to receive. Yeah, she's getting money for what she does, but I mean like really embody um, receiving and being given things. So she thinks that her busyness increases her social value. And, you know, one of the things that I noticed was most of the women were on tons of committees and they had a lot of commitments to organizations and and all of those things and you know I kind of sneakily <laughs> um, would have conversations with them about decluttering um, and you know making commitments that were more aligned with where they are some of those committees may have been things <clears throat> they have been doing for a really long time and they had evolved and they were no longer even in alignment with those organizations anymore um, and I'm not saying that they felt that their busyness gave them value, but I'm just giving that as an example because sometimes that is the place where that busyness comes from, where that um, extra volunteering comes from, where that if my schedule isn't Katie bar the door, if I haven't been invited to 50 different engagements, if I don't have 5,000 things to do, you know, I don't feel valuable. So I want you to... Take some time and check if you find that you're that booked and busy boss, babe, <clears throat> and you are committed to a lot of things. I want you to take a moment and sit with it and really ask yourself, "Am I? what is my real reason for doing this? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't commit to causes and things that we are 
um, aligned with because I do as well. But I do think it's important that we evaluate like the why we're doing some of the things that we're doing and realize that it won't fall apart if we're not there, right? They, they will choose someone else. And sometimes it's time for you to pass the torch. Um, anyway, the, but the um, Booked and Busy Boss Babe is all, often also a perfectionist, which, you know, can also come from a space of, you know, that's how they receive their value. Um, I believe that they're, I believe in a spirit of excellence, but it's completely different from a per perfectionist. So a perfectionist will, I mean, it has to be so perfect and they rarely ever get things done to the full that they desire it because it's never finished. It's, it's just like never finished. Um, the Booked and Busy Boss Babe is often a cheerleader for the hustle and the busy culture. Um, even in corporate America, she rarely even uses her vacation time. Like she rarely even uses what's given to her, what's offered. Um, so vacations are because I just got to have one and not necessarily because I'm scheduling this in and this is the time that I deserve those things. But she often um, doesn't even use her vacation time. As an entrepreneur, it's sometimes years before she takes a real vacation. Now, I mean, if you followed me for a long time, you know my story. I'd hit probably about my 15-year mark, and I had never had a Saturday off. I would travel, and I would go out of town, and I would do things, but I was going to work that Saturday. I, even if I went in, like, super, super early just to, you know, fit some people in before I went wherever I was going to go because my mindset was, okay, this is one of the busiest days of the week um, and I just need to be here and my clients need a Saturday appointment and all of those things, not realizing that my busiest day of the week was whatever day I wanted my busy day of the week to be, right? And as you increase in value, as you do inner work and healing and you are being booked and busy it, the day doesn't matter when the you know income comes in for you right you you don't have those limiting beliefs that you used to have before but um th so yeah i realized i was like man I, I mean now some saturdays i would take off but it was still connected to work like if i was flying out of town to go to a convention or a training or something like that but to just be off or it had to be an emergency with my daughter or something of that nature, but to just be off. And that was really huge for me when I added up the, the number of years. And I was like, okay, this is going to change. And so this has been many years ago now, but I, I began taking Saturdays off. And there was like this fear, <laughs> you know, around it at that time. But this is the Booked and Busy Boss Bay, right? I had a preferred waiting list of people waiting to get their hair done, how dare I, you know, take a, a Saturday off at this particular time. So, um, the booked and busy boss babe considers herself the multitasking queen. She actually brags about her ability to multitask or how busy her schedule is or how many places she has to be and all the things on her list. She has the proverbial to-do list. This is a book, The Busy Boss Babe. Oftentimes, she is heavily in her masculine energy. Um, she is team no sleep. Any of you ever been team no sleep? She's team no sleep. Um, she also has FOMO. That's fear of missing out. Again, this goes back to what I shared earlier about the book, The Busy Boss Babe. She believes that if she isn't busy, things will fall apart, right? So there's this innate fear <clears throat> That if she isn't going hard, you know, putting it to the paint, that she's going to miss out on something, right? Um, she, again, I said she has a proverbial to-do list. She lives her whole life through the business, what she got to do in the community, and work. Like, that is her life, the booked and busy boss babe. Um, dating is often on the back burner. Right, Not to say that you have to be dating or whatever, but oftentimes she's talking about the fact that she wants to date, but her life is so consumed and so full that she doesn't have time to date. This can lead to overlooking red flags if she is dating because she's too busy to sit and process and 
you know, it's kind of like, I'm just going to get somebody and let them get in where they fit in. But this is often the um, booked and busy boss babe. Now, I shared the starving artist and the booked and busy boss babe. But originally, in the beginning, I talked about feminine energy and masculine energy. And hopefully you can see the differences where the starving artist is so far in her feminine energy until she's the starving artist. And, you know, there's a lot of free flowing and free spirit about everything. She doesn't have the foundational systems needed in order to, you know, really do things in a profitable way. She is always coming up with 50 different things and, you know, they're left undone and projects and all these those things because... A huge part of the feminine energy is creativity. It's creativity. And when a person's uh, feminine energy doesn't have a, a healthy, harmonious balance of masculine energy, they will create a lot of things, but not necessarily move forward with them or find profitability in those things because the masculine container is not there. There's not enough harmony in the masculine energy in order for that thing to become um, profitable. Let's see. Um, so with the booked and busy boss babe, she's so far in her masculine, there's no creativity. So if there was an opportunity for her to do things differently, she's stuck in that routine. She's so stuck in that routine that she's not open to the more creative side that's going to allow her more freedom or a, a better way of doing it so that she can have a different quality of life. Um, if she has people that she's working with so that she is better with them, you know, your feminine and masculine energy has a lot to do with your relationships. I, in this space of work that I've been sharing with you all, which is something that I've been doing personally for many years now, uh, but just the clients that I was helping within their business, I was noticing other areas that I knew if they tapped into those areas, things would completely change. They would have a full circle experience in their life and their business. So if you learn uh, the, the balance that's needed, it'll change your relationships and your business. You'll live a more, a fuller, richer, more embodied life where you're actually, you know, able to process in the moments and experience life from a whole different perspective. Um, so if you feel rushed, overwhelmed, like you have no time for yourself, exhausted, all of those things, um, it's usually because you are operating heavily in your masculine energy. And I want to give you an opportunity to reconnect with yourself and tap into your um, feminine energy. I have a master life class called Her. It is all about feminine energy. It's all about embracing a fuller, richer, more connected life. Um, I'm going to walk you through differences in feminine and masculine energy and how to balance in those areas so that you can experience life from a different space. And I've done something amazing for you because I'm a woman of my word. Um, I have a Renew Flash offer. It's really, really a flash offer. And it is available for you for the next seven hours. So whatever time you're watching this, the seven hours is probably dwindling. But after seven hours, the price will increase. It's a really no-brainer. I know I've said that before, but it's a no-brainer cost. So for those of you who want to um, identify more with your feminine side or maybe you need masculine containers and you don't know what that looks like, what that masculine energy looks like that you would need, I'm hosting a Master Life class on April the 26th. But if you want to get a real great um, deal, right, on investing in yourself, you have seven hours to get that opportunity. You can go to RenewfulCircle.com slash her to RenewfulCircle.com slash her to. And that's the number two. You got seven hours or a little less for those of you who are ready and you know, this is what I need. I need to feel more connected. I need to feel um, more fulfilled. I want to live a richer, fuller life, these blocks and this resistance. And I just want to do this thing differently. So it will help you tremendously, not only in your everyday life, but also in your business. 
how you feel, how you show up. So many women operate so much in their masculine energy that it ages them. We don't even know that because we weren't meant to function. That's for the men, really. Um, we weren't really meant to function at that high level of um, busyness and go, go, go. Rest is important to, to women and not the rest that you do because you're so tired, you, you can't do nothing but rest, not that type of rest. And um, your feminine energy, just learning to embody it in a different way will bless your whole entire life. Your thinking is clearer. Um, this is something that's also needed in healthy relationships. If you are looking for a healthy masculine partner, your femininity is going to be important or you are going to trigger him into being competitive and things like that because the masculine is their nature. Competing is their nature. And oftentimes as women, when we're operating in our masculine energy and we're not aware of it, we actually trigger them into some of that you know, competitiveness that we may see and feel that happens in relationships. Also, why they be calling us bitter sometimes when, you know, sometimes we not bitter, we just die of stuff. But I believe that once we've gone through the stuff for quite some time, it does impact us internally and it does cause us to um, operate in more of a masculine energy that we may not be aware of. So I'm excited about this uh, particular opportunity. I'm also going to add, and I thought about this earlier, I'm also going to add a segment on um, embracing a feminine style of dressing for you. Not for me, for you. What's ideal for you? So you'll kind of be able to figure that out as well. Those are, that's just a little bonus that I'm going to do. I'm actually going to um, take that concept and do something else with it at another time um, in a collaboration with someone. All of this was a download added to this um, on today. But um, you guys are going to get like a little peek at what I'll be doing later inside the Her Master Life class. So go ahead. You got seven hours, maybe six, five and a half by now. I'm not sure. But let me know how this registered for you, what thoughts you have, what comes up for you when you're listening to this. If you found value, say hello to me in the comments. Tag someone that you think um, could use this information. Share the training with them, renewfullcircle.com slash her to. And if you want them to get in at um, the Renew Flash offer, it got a little less than seven hours, okay? That's my take. The Starving Artist and the Booked and Busy Boss, babe. We got to find some harmony. That's my take.